In the year 2050, there will be 9 billion people. How do we feed them safely, fairly and well? And make sure every mouth is fed. Well, my name is uh, Akin Adeshina, and the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development for Nigeria. Uh, I've been on the job for uh, a year now, and it's exciting and challenging, but I love it. In Nigeria, Dr. Akin Adeshina is a government minister with a mission. My job is to make sure that I unlock the potential of agriculture in Nigeria, and it should not be importing food. The ministers provoked a debate. On a globalized planet, should countries like Nigeria really try to grow all their own food? I'm not going to stand up and want to make, I want to probably make it lasagna and I can't find ingredients for it. And because I live in Nigeria, all of a sudden I'm not going to have lasagna. Where should we grow our future food? What is stopping fertile countries feeding themselves. And in a globalized world, is self-sufficiency really the answer? I enjoy Nigerian food tremendously. One of the wonderful things about working in rural areas is that one has the opportunity to travel different parts of the country and in every different location I've been so happy to have Amala or Gary or Semovita or Eba and all the soups that are produced locally with different vegetables are indeed delicious. In Nigeria's teeming marketplaces, where most of its 162 million people buy food, they're proud of Nigerian food. Locally made foods are very, very important. Uh, they contain nutrients that are very good to the body like vegetables, fruits. Foods that are made in Nigeria has the natural content. They've not been chemicalized and all those things. So to me, I prefer foods that are made in Nigeria. There should be a premium on Nigerian vegetables because if you compare them, our plantain, the tomatoes, they are richer. Most of them are not grown artificially like most of the things you get outside Nigeria. 50 years ago, Nigeria was proud of how much food it produced. Agriculture was 60% of GDP and a major source of export revenue. The minister calls them the glory days of Nigerian farming. Nigeria was a powerhouse in food in the 60s. We were accounting for 18% of the global production of cocoa at the time. Uh, we were accounting for 47% of the global supply of shelled granuts in 1961. But they disappeared, and why? That was because Nigeria found oil. And when Nigeria found oil, Nigeria went away from agriculture. So we went from being a country that was self-sufficient in food in the 60s to today a country that is spending a whopping amount of you know, $11 billion a year importing basic food items. Now Nigeria, the world's seventh most populous country, is one of the world's largest food importers. Oil, bureaucracy, corruption, the overweening power of foreign suppliers. Everyone has an opinion why there's so much less homegrown food. You know why we are importing some food is because we, are, we, don't, we don't have a machineries, chemical or whatever to produce it in a quality form. What is the need of importing food? There's no need because everything here in Nigeria, we have it. As consumer organizations point out, it's foreign suppliers who have most economic muscle. People that do the importation have greater power, greater control, maybe even more financially capable to flood the market with whatever they want to flood the market with. With his usual security escort, the minister arrives at a farmer's rally. He's here to launch the government's new plan to help Nigeria feed itself. Whatever the reasons for falling behind, says Minister Adishina, who's an agricultural economist, Nigeria can bring back the glory days. I'm delighted to see the work that's going on in Lagos State. I'm delighted to see the 
great initiative and the efforts of the state government in getting the youth into agriculture, in supporting rice farmers and supporting cassava farmers. We are launching today here what is called the Growth Enhancement Support. Under that initiative, we are targeting five million farmers every year to get seeds and to get fertilizer. The message? Nigerians should produce their own food, just as they wear their own garments, like Ashoke and the Ankara. A message rammed home by the state governor. I am happy when our people are holding parties. And I see the Ashoke and the Ankara. Then the economy is kept here. But if we continue to make parties and we are eating imported food at that party, those parties and its inconvenience and its challenges prosper another economy. Let us continue to think inside. We must understand that, yes, many of us want to live in the cities and wear ties, but the place to make money is where you will get your hands dirty, is where you will work. We must think of wealth in terms of productive activity. That is why Brazil is leaving us behind, because Brazil can feed itself. We have the land, we have the water, we have the men. And we now have the policy. Let us embrace it. My job is to make sure that I unlock the potential of agriculture in Nigeria. We have 84 million hectares of land, arable land, as a country, and we're not using even more than 40% of those. We have 230 billion cubic meters of water. We're not using irrigation, we have great sunshine. So with all of that, cheap labor, a market of 167 million people of consumers, I should not be importing food. I should be producing food processing food, adding value to it, creating jobs. So we set for ourselves huge targets. First and foremost is to add to the domestic food supply 20 million metric tons of food between now and 2015. Second is to reduce our dependency on imports and in fact become self-sufficient in rice by 2015. The policy pursued in Nigeria, which is to rebuild the ability for the country to feed itself, is, is vital for that country and for many other food deficit countries in sub-Saharan Africa. The reason is simple. With climate change and speculation on the markets of agricultural commodities, prices in the future will be higher and they will be more volatile. And so countries which have not invested in local food production, countries who depend highly on food imports to feed themselves, will be in a very dire situation in the years to come. Could Nigeria even become a food exporter and help feed the future 9 billion? It's an ambition supported by the UN agency, which assists small farmers, if ad. Uh, for particular commodities, we should be selective. Those commodities should be produced at a scale, at a quality, which can be exported to other international markets. And I think that should be the long-term goal of Nigeria. But currently, I think the first goal would be food self-sufficiency and ensuring that Nigeria, for all its major commodities, can produce locally. Rice is key. If Nigeria grows more, it could replace both rice and wheat imports. The government is boosting production with 18 new rice processing plants. Their products, something to boast about. One of the things I'm most excited about is this. You know, Nigerians love to, have, to buy imported rice. And that's because the local rice, they complain, it's, it's colored, uh, it's broken, and it has stones in it. Well, that's not rocket science. We fixed that problem. This is Nigerian rice. It's long grain, parboiled, high quality rice coming out of the new integrated rice mills we have in Nigeria. This rice is the best rice you've ever had. It's actually better than any rice that comes in from India or from Thailand, and it's proudly Nigerian rice. In the market, they seem to agree. Uh, have you tested uh, Nigerian rice and this foreign rice? Do, do you notice the difference? If you eat Nigerian rice, it's sweet. 
than this one, this foreign rice. The difference is clear. Rice farming in Nigeria has been constrained by poor crop management techniques and shortages of fertilizer and irrigation. But some farmers claim homegrown rice can now not only be good quality, but cheaper too. Rice is Tiwa Yi, no? Tiwa Yi. Oh, wa shipa ju to wun lo. O de wu dada, o de to dun, o ni taste dada, natural wun ni. Ko si pe bi won po lo, ko si pe bi won ti fi kini kan si, kan le fi preserve we. Ya to si yen, e tu wo. E to wa tu shetan, rice bran. Awon yen ran wa tu je. Rice bran ti to, e ta wa to won ko wa fun wa bi, rest rest won ko wa, to ko fun wa bi. I rest won ko wa, no nje. Awon fi awon nkan to ku yen, oda o produce, awon fi bu awon kan Ologun. Awon kan nje resi. Adesonia farms on the outskirts of Lagos, a model farm owned by Lagos State to try and put the minister's grow Nigerian theories into practice. Farmer Adesonia too recalls the old glory days of Nigerian farming. Without farming, tell me, are we not going to eat? Instead of Abawa, Tonshe Nye, Tonshe Kwe, Anu Koko House, Anu Granite Pyramid, to what disappear? Now, I look at our minister, I pay on Padasibe. I'm up with Benny, Ashiro, I go Nigeria. As we film, farmer Adesonia's planting corn, ugu, peppers, yams, and other traditional Nigerian crops. The idea to show that with the right fertilizer, irrigation, and equipment, Nigeria could have a green revolution of its own with self sufficiency and more jobs. Farmer Adesonia's thrilled. It is only farming that can absorb more than 60% workforce. They are, they are taking the right step. We have to go back fully into farming. Nigeria can be self-sufficient in food production, provided you deal with the genuine farmers, provided our government encourage a uh, farmer, our farming system is upright. The type of land we have in Nigeria is superb. We can have more than enough food in Nigeria, provided if the government comes to the aid of the farmers. Adesonia is just one of many farmers, the government hopes, who will now be planting more cassava, a crop which provides basic carbohydrate for over half a billion people worldwide. Nigeria is the world's biggest producer. Adesonia says previous cassava harvests here were left to rot. Now he's more hopeful. Right now we are in the cassava plot. So the, 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 this area has just been ploughed for cassava plantation. You can see our boys on the farm, on the farm now planting cassava. Like rice, cassava is crucial to the minister's self-sufficiency strategy. He believes cassava could be processed into tasty food for the supermarket shelves. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava in the world, uh, but we are not adding value to cassava. At the same time, we are the largest importer of wheat in the world. And so by substituting high quality cassava flour in bread up to the level of 20%, we can reduce our dependency on wheat imports and also create jobs locally. In Lagos, it's the Children's Day March, a chance to convince future generations about future food, Nigerian style. Not foreign wheat-only bread, but local cassava bread. Today is Children's Day, and uh, the federal government has decided that uh, we should uh, distribute the bread, which uh, was commissioned to UTC to use 20% cassava and 80% wheat for bread to distribute to the children. The cassava bread is delicious. I love it. It's sweet. It's delicious more than Nagedi bread. For the minister, it's a business opportunity for Nigeria. Here is cassava bread. It's made out of 20% high-quality cassava flour and 80% with flour. This is commercial, this is not government. This bread is tastier bread, is better bread, is healthier bread, and finally is that it's cheaper. This bread 
cost 60% the cost of wheat bread. And so this alone is going to save our economy. It's almost close to $2 billion, uh, $1.52 billion every year just by making that substitution. So our president directed us that we should commercialize this cassava bread. And you see in the private sector, this is from UTC. This is one of the, the largest corporate baker in the country. UTC is a wholly indigenous company owned by Nigerians 100%, run by Nigerians, and making products fit for the Nigerian market. The minister said we should include cassava. Let us see how we can do this. Competition was naturally worried that, you know, this was a big risk. But we decided to go along that line because we know, yes, you can pay the price if it goes negative, but if it goes positive, there's so many benefits that you can bring into the organization. So yes, we challenged uh, industry and conventional norms in the baking industry, and we're happy we did it. We're happy today. Nigerian cassava replacing imported wheat, and not just in bread, a big opportunity for the future. For Nigeria, cassava is an incredibly important crop. It is the, the largest producer of cassava in the world. What we really need to do is develop the markets and the demand for cassava. And so therefore, to have um, cassava flour, uh, which becomes a natural demand for this large production, is excellent. And uh, we do believe that there are also other areas whereby cassava can be used for other products. We are also making quite a lot of pastries that are coming out of this. The whole sense here is that it is about the economy. It's about economics. We are creating markets for our cassava farmers right now that they've never had before. It's not just rice and cassava. As we met the minister, an unexpected arrival. Mrs. Aero has come down from the north to see the minister's aid to promote her local crop atcha, only grown in the north. At last, she's found someone to help her. We have women, over 200 of us are farming something called atcha. I came here some times ago to see the minister concerning our farm in uh, Bauchi. I've come back to give them some reports on some directives that the minister gave. This is my dream, Nigeria. If it goes on the way and manner I have seen him responded to me, if it goes on like that, in fact, we are just starting. So is the minister really going to promote indigenous foods like Mrs. Arrow's? Or is he suggesting everything's turned into bland, Western-style processed food? Our Nigerian director was keen to know. We're not going to lose those indigenous, wonderful little gems of that Nigerian food which you can't find anywhere else, are we? You know, we have great food in Nigeria. You have Eba, you have Amala, you have Lafon, you have Okra, you have pepper soup. Those are things that are unique to us. And what I'm saying is that we are going to focus on that. Look, the, the Chinese have Chinese rice, right? The Japanese have tofu. What we have, Amala, we have Epa, we have yams. Those are the things that we are promoting now for our people to like our local food. So for example, one thing we are doing with yams right now, we're gonna start doing with yams, is instead of buying that tuba of yam, you know, and transporting it, slice the yam, deep freeze it, pre-cook it, make it available in the supermarket that anybody that wants to have breakfast, all they have to do is take it off the supermarket shelf, take it and throw it inside of water or fry it within 10 minutes, it's done. We must, as a continent, make it easier to process and add value to food. Africa must go back to its own food but make it easier to process and add value to. But there are still problems. Many fertile countries, like Nigeria, are dogged by shortages, inefficiencies, and worse. Right now, farmer Adesonia could certainly do with more fertilizer. 
ko to rara fun quantity gba do yen 40 kg of maize we cover about 3 hectares of farmland and for you to cover 3 hectares of farmland with fertilizer you have to use about 18 bags of fertilizer ngba tin e ba wa ah ise alo o nja ponlu Minister Adishina has a terse explanation for fertilizer shortages and a promise of action. Mr. President has directed that we must clean up this situation of corruption that we find in the fertilizer sector of Nigeria, where only 11% of farmers get the seeds and fertilizers that are subsidized by government. Under the minister's new plan, Farmers register to buy subsidized fertilizer straight from commercial suppliers. The state middlemen are being cut out of the distribution chain. Federal government does not buy fertilizer or distribute fertilizer any longer in Nigeria. Fertilizer is not different from Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola. It's a commodity. There's no reason for them to be supplying the commodity to my warehouse. They should be selling it directly to farmers. And when the government was doing it, Sometimes you get fertilizer half bag. Sometimes you get sand instead of fertilizer. It's a very corrupt system. So what we have right now is we have moved to what we call private sector driven delivery systems. The role of government has changed. We are targeting this year 4.5 million farmers to get subsidized fertilizers, but not through the old system. They get it through what we call an electronic wallet. We have a database of all the farmers we are targeting, so we know them. We have all their biometric information. First of all, you receive text messages inviting you to come here, you know, and collect this thing at subsidized rates. Now, the, the, the invitation also gives you voucher numbers, which will stipulate the numbers you use for the collection of uh, urea fertilizer, for the collection of MPK fertilizer. And you collect your two bags of fertilizers and you go home. There is no politician between you and your fertilizer. There's no local government chairman between you and the fertilizer. Nigeria growing more of its own food by cutting out corruption. For small-scale farmer Adesonia, it's a huge prize. Now, low the corruption. Corruption is eradicated. We then build our, I'm our lifted up. So this is low to. I get beer to tea. Team Minister Bika Lensin, I on what way. So no look back, I did in full armor. Oh, we are too deep. Fumo, because we are caught on back on the way. So I'm not too yoke in the combat. So I said, need to pay conjure and coach my true one on your con. But do people really want to eat only food grown at home? <laughs> Chef Uche cooks fusion dishes, African food with a global twist. I, I, like, I like to think of myself as a fusion chef. I like to cut across cuisines and you know, push them. Most of the ingredients I use are gotten Africa, Europe, just a mix of everything. Chef Uche fears that policies favoring homegrown produce can be out of place in today's globalized world. He worries what would happen if government policies were to make imports too expensive or even unavailable. The, the essence of food is to convey a message. Food is a universal language. It would be unfair for all of a sudden to deny people certain things based on what, you know, what they, they can afford. I, I, I will not have money and want to buy something. You tell me it's not available for me because the government says you can't have this. Food is everybody's basic right. Okay, I don't think anybody should have a sale of what somebody should eat or what somebody shouldn't eat. I'm not going to stand up and want to make, I want to probably make lasagna and I can't find ingredients for it. And I have people that want to have lasagna. And because I live in Nigeria, all of a sudden I'm not going to have lasagna. Now, what, what makes me different from the guy living in Italy? We're all human beings. Yes, so we should have, it, it's choice, it's our right. Imported food effectively banned or rationed? No talk of that in Nigeria yet. They're just encouraging local food. But such bans have been imposed in some countries using high import barriers and taxes. Nigeria's consumer groups are already on the case. Whatever the policy will be, 
must give consumers access to variety, availability, so that they can not be caged down to buying from one source and give consumers uh, access to variety and opportunity also to exercise their right to choice. So make the options available and then let people decide what they want to eat. And at the end of the year, you can look at the data of the supermarkets and see what people actually buy, whether they buy more of the imports or more of the local. Consumers free to decide, governments promoting farming. Nigeria reckons it's the right way to feed the future. Africa has the largest amount of land available right now in the world. Nigeria alone has enough amount of land, not only to feed itself, but to be the largest food exporter on this continent. We have a world that's going to be soon nine billion people that we have to feed. The fact is, what is Africa's role in feeding that world, in itself and feeding that world? And it's huge. Of course, the farmers who have the largest role in feeding Africa remain its small-scale farmers, themselves consumers, voters, employers, and job creators. An attempt for a country to rebuild its food production and to feed itself is an opportunity for small farmers that must be seized upon. And by investing in these food producers, we encourage a local food processing industry to emerge. We encourage the local marketing of this produce. And so we create employment in the other sectors of the economy than the agricultural sector itself. So it's an opportunity that must be seized upon to relaunch rural development and to, and to reduce um, uh, poverty in these countries. And those are sentiments farmer Adesonia can only endorse. Come also know that without farmer, no, no, no great nation, no. And without food, no, no life, no. So that's why we say great farmer, great nation. No farmer, no life. Because no farmer, no food. No food, no life.